Hi, welcome to this most exciting talk. My name is Jia Qi. I'm a second year Promedia graduate student. Please allow me to introduce our special guest today, Chen Yu, our third year grad student who put a dark banana into a condom. Welcome, Chen Yu. Thank you. Uh, nice to see everyone here. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Jia Qi? Yeah, so I studied Promedia, and before that, I studied sculpture. I use picture as materials and digital printing as methods to make small objects, sculptures, videos, prints, and photographs. I'm interested in visual language, including digital form and the gray area between real and unreal. For the most recent project, some of you might have already known about this, is about TV. Let me hijack your screens for a moment. What I'm going to show you is a part of a two minute and 26 second video that contains commercial ads from different tech companies about their TV. And I'm glad to have a broadcasting professional to do the voiceover I wrote. 身处绚烂之中，目击之处，相同的演绎必不可少。大自然之中，再看自然，用您的荧幕观看其背后一模一样的波澜壮阔。It's mainly about the simulation, the delivery, and the consumption of the image of um, whatever, a better life, or a symbol of success. And it's also about a contradiction between that and, according to some philosophers, a traumatized reality. So I enjoy making jokes about issues because sometimes that would be the best way for communication. And the purpose of my practices, including text-based projects and some experimental public events, which might not be my main focus, their purpose is to deliver a new perspective and a new experience. I would not consider myself an artist, but um, an art worker, or you may say, I'm just a person Wait, who uh, makes art. Sorry, I have to interrupt you. Uh, why, why would you not consider yourself an artist? Well, I think um, I think this is an artist or artist talk, right? Although yes. it's called a uh, grad talk. Yeah. Well. In my opinion, artist is a big word. Where, where I'm from, you're from China too, you know this. When people graduate, they will not consider themselves artists. That is so awkward. And sometimes the word artist has some negative meanings. Like when somebody calls you, oh, you're an artist. What I mean is that yeah, yeah, everything you do is art. I'm not supposed to understand, and we don't have to understand each other. You feel me? So, so people like me normally wouldn't call themselves artists. 艺术家, it's like being the master of art. That makes you arrogant.
Mm, then who do you think have the power to define somebody an artist, the the museum, the gallery, or some magazines? You let those people define you. You know, you know the artist Jackson Pollock, right? Yeah. Uh, he's an artist I really don't like. Okay. He was an artist defined by the U.S. government. So you see, uh, this is how you let other people define you, being an artist. Mm. I get you. I'm not saying to let those people define you, although this is an issue about discourse power. But whether someone should call himself an artist, it depends. I'm not an artist because I have no viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay,、uh, it depends.、Uh, when you when you apply the grad school, you know our school.、Uh, I think the school calls you artist, right? So,、uh, what do you make here? You make as an artist. What you learn here, you learn as an artist. So, this is what artist、uh, art school does. And I believe you need to be confident to to be more confident about you. you I think you should call yourself artist. Interesting point, but I do remember they have said. Your peers would become your new favorite artists, writers, curators, and collaborators. <laughs> anyway, have you read Howard Singerman's Art Subjects?、Mm-hmm. This book talks about fine art teaching in American universities.、Mm, yes, I I think I read that before.、Uh, in my memory, I think he he was also thinking about the the identity about an artist. Yeah, a lot of schools took for granted that we are all here as artists in grad school. Give me a second. So, here's a quote: In grammar school, to continue this play of subjects and objects. Teachers teach art. In my undergraduate college, artists taught art. In the grad school, artists teach artists. So you see the transformation of the identities here. But some of us, maybe a lot of us, are still concerning or being annoyed by the title artist. Hmm. Well,、uh, I I don't think so. I I think most of us consider ourselves artists. You know,、uh, for me, being an artist, that means、uh, you have more responsibility to this society. You know, like、um, like what you just said. You said the art is a really big word. I agree with that totally. But I think the reason is because. Uh, artists deal with bigger issues, right?、Mm, my my work will be art, and I might be an artist one day. But I'm not so sure if it's today. If one of my work pieces was sold for fifty thousand dollars, I am an artist. Okay, come on, like you, your work won't be sold that high. In recently years, but could you tell me or tell tell everyone here, like, when do you think or in what specific moment you think you are being an artist?、Hmm. Well, actually, you know what I've discussed that in a piece of work. Okay.、Um, allow me to show you some images. Yeah. In 2017, I went to Scotland as an exchange student. I wonder when is the time I grow up to be an artist from an art student. Let me put on an exhibition. I exhibited the exhibition itself. I show the evidence of the existence of the show 
like screenshots of information posted online and photographs of posters in real life. And from my standpoint, I revealed an artist's need to maintain the identity as an artist. It was during the Christmas holiday, everyone was home, but that's all right. I can write down my first solo exhibition on my CV. I, I thought I've been an artist since then. Okay. Um, okay, that's a, that's a nice try, I think. But um, I think that's oversimplified to me, you know. You just book, uh, you just made a reservation of a critique space from the school and you call it an exhibition, right? That's, I think that's what you did. Uh, I personally wouldn't call it an ex exhibition. I see that uh, part of you are uh, challenging the form of exhibiting. I do remember the the same thing happened like last year, I think before the quarantine, you did the same, basically the same thing in our school. You, uh, about your second like solo show. What, what's, what's the show name again? Obedient Art. Right, right, right. That one in the, in the Solomon uh, building, right? In the studio. Uh, so for that show, I wasn't there before. So for that show, I think, I think we could definitely push the limit fuller, right? Um, you can get out of your comfort zone. You know what I mean? So I think you should do that and rather than just, uh, just playing around. Uh, I went to your show. And I remember, I think there are less than 10 people visit that, uh, visit that exhibition. It doesn't work. Hmm. Like I said, no viewers, no artists. By the way, what do you mean by working? What does art do and when does it work? What's, what's your question? Oh, what's your answer? Sorry. Hmm. I, I don't know if you mean working by solving any problems. For me, art is never used to solve a problem. So when I was filling a form for an application or asked to write about my artistic intention, when it comes to the question about what is at stake of your project, I don't know. I don't know what question, um, what issue is at emergency to be addressed or to be solved. What I do is playing around the, in this direction about visual art, uh, simulacra, things like that. Nothing is at stake. Uh, what Jean Boja studied 40 years ago is still pretty on edge today. This is not a matter of time unless you are focusing on social issues, like politics, culture, and so on. Those problems, from my perspective, is time sensitive. So working here, I mean, what I do is playing around, making fun, talking jokes. I wish my work can start a conversation, point out something being ignored, in daily life and lead people to question the visual experience. Um, yes, uh, uh, I think it is too important to find out what is uh, you just said at stake. It, to be confident about your artistic, artistic purpose. That reminds me of, that reminds me of news. I think I read a news before it's saying like uh, there were 2 million art students, art major students every year and uh, only 10% of them uh, working as a real, really artist after graduation. You know that one? I, I think I've saw that survey too. It, I think it's from something like National Association. Yeah, 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 that one. So uh, I think that was famous, but anyway, uh, the. The reason 
uh, the reason why I was talking about this news and uh, also answer your question. What does art do? I believe the I believe your work should be solid. You know, you need a real core of your work. Uh, as as you know, my work also deal with humors and uh, jokes, but that doesn't mean it's just funny. It doesn't mean you are your work is uh, amusing people. So, uh, I think even though your work is talking about uh, uh, jokes about the funny, but I think the more important thing is your work should be uh, more related to related to human emotion, you know? Mm. I think that is exactly what I just said, uh, to connect and communicate. Mm. Um, that's the reason why I barely make serious work and the form of playing is a better formula, rather a superficial appearance. Okay. Uh, well, uh, that's that's interesting. But anyway, uh, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, I think you have a really big screen in uh, in our print shop, right? In the uh, in the screen print room. Uh, but I think I haven't seen you working there for a really long time. Would you would you like to sell your screen to me? <laughs> Offer a price. I don't know. Maybe maybe one dollar. <laughs> oh, cut your shit. I have a complicated feeling about pre-making. I know almost nothing when. Um, I know almost nothing about printing techniques when mm -hmm. I enter the media department. But still, I sometimes don't see the reason for me to make prints at this moment, which meaning screen printing, etching, monotype, etc. I don't see the reason for me to print out a digital image into four color CMYK channels. And the process of pre-making is so disturbing and time-consuming. I'm not judging other people, but this is this is not the way I work. <laughs> okay, um, I think you are a rebel. You know what I mean. <laughs> I think, I think. Uh, uh, in, uh, just tell me if I'm saying it wrong, but. Almost all your advisor came from other department, right? You you have advisor came from uh, sculptor, from uh, architecture, or, uh, and there are some like a, a visual communication, right? So why why are you still here in our department? I love all the advisors I've chosen. Doesn't matter what department, and you see, it's a pain to ask to manage and categorize my work. There are videos, photographs, ready-made objects, paper sculptures, and it is also painful to list all those mediums when introducing myself. I would prefer to say I'm a visual art worker rather than a printmaker or sculptor. I hate making several versions of portfolio uh, for different occasions because like for example when applying to an intermediate class at Wiscom department mm -hmm. I need to send them a typography portfolio and for a seminar at FVNMA department I need to make a moving image portfolio at the end yeah. I feel so tired of knowing so much let me show you some pictures. Okay. I'm just going to quickly go through these images.
anyway, I, I chose Primedia department was because I love the texture and the materiality of digital printing on paper. Primedia is a place that looks beyond traditional printing techniques. That's why it's called Primedia rather than pre-making department. Yes, yes. I think that, uh, yeah, I agree with that. But, but I think it's still a pity that you don't use the print shop at all. Uh, as you know, this is my third year here, and I'm still using this space to print. Basically, every day I come here and print. And uh, I think we already saw your work. Uh, if I'm not seeing wrong, they are all digital thing, right? Yeah, you mean printed by a printer? Yeah, I could, they are all digital. So yeah, as you just said, the, if you just print it out, you can just use a printer to print it out. You don't have your, you don't have your hands in the process. It's made by a computer and a printer. All your code digital work, they, they're so like no hand in that. Where is your hands in your print? Uh, where is your hands in your work? <laughs> Oh. My hands are here. Yeah. yeah. I, I care about ideas and logic more than hands and techniques at this time. Although I'm starting, starting to pay more attention to increase the complexity of the work. I enjoy using the $50,000 camera from Media Center right now. And I find this very bad habit in many art schools. When some students introduce their work, say a video, an installation, or even a painting, they would say the apple in the painting means love, <laughs> that in the video means sex. And when they talk about these symbols, elements, and components of their work, they don't talk about the logic and the relationship between those things. To, so the gathering of meanings are powerless, weak. That's why I say logic and ideas come in the first place, then production and techniques. And then I will try to choose the best medium for my work. Mm. Uh, let me see what time it is. Okay, uh, it's almost a 6.30, so, well, I think the, there's a last question for you today. Uh, what is art? Or you can ask, who is art? Okay. An agreeable woman seems to be ingenious by her very looks. In a green gown, in her right hand, I believe it's her left hand, a hammer, an engraving tool, and a pencil. Holding in her right hand, it a stake that supports a vine. All right. All right. Thank you for joining in this beautiful night before Thanksgiving. Above was a scripted conversation. I have special thanks to Chen Yu, Jia En, Adrian, and Lan. They supported me a lot on this project. Now I think it's time for questions. Thank you for your performance. Perfect. No one has a question for us. <laughs> uh, 
I saw everyone's hands was like this. <laughs> we will wait for five minutes. <laughs> Is there a question or not? Lawrence, Lawrence, your sound is very digital. Oh, oh my God. Your, where is your cold sound? Where is your sound? Too digital. Better now? No. Back to you later. No, hold your phone up. I think Jackson Pollock just enter our room. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's the only true thing I said in this conversation. I really don't like him. <laughs> that's that's not a fake. Okay, I'm back. Hey. Um, can you talk about the commercial that you showed in the beginning a little bit more? Um. Ah, uh, they are. TV ads about TV, and all of them has one thing in common. Um, when they like when they play an image of a mountain in a TV, and at the back of the TV, there are more mountains. I was dealing with this kind of simulation, and you know. I, f I just find this hilarious. Maybe when the whole work is finished, I have more things to say, but right now. Okay, thank you. I'm just curious. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I actually have a question about like how others define you as a artist because I didn't study like any drawing or painting in my high school or university. But yeah, I, I study like how to um design by my by myself and I define myself as an artist. So <laughs> I'm not sure whether I, I'm correct to do that because you say that you, even you, are not an artist. And yeah, my question is like, um, so how, how do you define an artist? I, I mean, there is no right question. That's why we are arguing it tonight. Yeah, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only you can there's no right answer, right? Yeah, but do you have a, like, I don't know, like how, how people in your department or people study studying in your department define an artist? Like, do they have a you or a, a standard to do that? No, they, they would just say, I am an artist, like okay. you. <laughs> so if I... If I can paint by myself or design some 2D characters and my 2D patterns, I, I can define myself as an artist, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You, you make me more confident. <laughs> um, can I ask a question? I'm a bit confused here. Is it performance the whole thing so yes. this performance based on the script script or something yes we practice it for weeks okay <laughs> <laughs> so so what's the point i can't get an argument about what is art what does art do and What's the purpose of an artist? Is art useful? Things like that. 
which have no right answers. But for me, this is a whole conversation. A bit funny for me. Okay. It's all very pretentious. Just you still quote about, just like talk about if you are artist or not. Uh, what is art? Let's. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? I feel. Is it necessary to have a conversation like this? I don't know. I wasn't expecting that the focus has been drawn to something like whether these questions about our artists worth to be asked. I, the reason I do this performance is, well, in these two years, I revisited my practices too many times. And I'm so tired looking back and, you know, like just introduce my work for 30 minutes. I, I would feel exhausted. So not this time, I, I decided not to do that. That's why I invented such a performance. I thought I, thought I, I can like, uh see some like a pro uh, process or something from your practice but it's like a, all these questions or conversations for me that's that's not the it's a waste of your time <laughs> i didn't say that but <laughs> <laughs> okay Okay. But if but if is a performance, I understand that. I I do have a talk in January twenty twenty one, and um, hosted by CICA. It's called Art Teleported Korea. In that one, I would talk about my practice and my study in more detail. If you like. I can send you an invitation to that one. Okay. Um, I guess following up on that, I, I was wondering about that too, because uh, I wonder at what point is the kind of alienation and satirization or the alienation you cause upon the viewer by kind of performing this odd, like self-conscious kind of like artist talk that <clears throat> it, understanding it as a performance, there's a certain level of like becoming the pretentious artist who can't answer a question, can only answer a question with another worse question kind of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm wondering what kind of, what, what kind of value you see coming out of that? Like what, what that kind of um, goal is beyond that alienation? Cause like, I can think of it as, as this thing, which, you know, kind of pushes the viewer to think more deeply about um, their certain relationships to art. Yeah. But it's it's that it's it's that balancing act. Like, at what point do you kind of just then fully alienate, and at what point do you create conditions for a much richer conversation? If that makes sense. Mm. I I mean, including the previous two solo exhibition and this talk, they are all asking these same questions. And I don't know, uh, but I think it's a, this is the last time I would do things like this to ask this question. Um, I would call this a public event, experimental public event. And 
It is different from my main practices about visual art. It is kind of divided to kind of practices. No, I I have to correct myself here. I think of the fake interview about extreme cutout jeans, and also those pieces like camouflage and video call. I've been challenging the personal experience of real and unreal. The form of deceiving has always been planted in my practices, so it's a bit unfair for it. If I if I just said this talk has a different intention, and I'm not so sure how deep this one can go. I don't think I don't know if I answer your question. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of tapping into this history of lecture performance that questions the the format of the lecture.、Mm -hmm. um, like, there's a. Do you know the artist Scott Burton?、Mm, no. He did a performance、uh, where he basically dressed up as an art history professor, gave a talk about his own work, referring to himself as only this young American artist,、mm -hmm. and then. You know, talked about his work, and then at the end came back out dressed in a pair of overalls with a big, bright like pink dildo attached to it, and like had his hair down, and then like kind of answered questions as this、um, as this like young artist.、Um, and so like you're kind of tapping into that、um, history, and I think something to consider is that there is a lot of value in what it is that you're doing.、Um, In these kinds of questions, but I think that there's like a certain level. You're kind of you're hitting that. You're right on that balancing act, especially once we get this part. The whole thing kind of flips on its head, and it it's a bit more endearing and feels less kind of alienating. But I think that kind of question it seems to course throughout your work. This kind of like question of like value and and. What it what's what the, something appears to be is not what it is.、Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just I would just say, you know, I think it's an important question, especially when people come expecting one thing and they get another. And I think that kind of has come up a little bit already. But yeah, that's what I would say.、Mm I believe the form of this talk is my response and my react to what I have experienced personally. I was going to quit when the script was half finished, and I have never overcome the fear to speak in public. Luckily, my friends and my teachers had my back, and I'm so happy. We had over thirty-five people came to the talk. Thanks. Okay, I I think we are running out of time today. Thank you, thank you for being here. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Bye.
I see Jackson Pollock is still trying to connect with uh, all the yeah poor guy. <laughs> he doesn't have a speaker or a mic. Yeah. Our bottle just left. Kushin Yao. Oh no, no, not your Kushin. Kushin Yao will show up. We'll stop recording this. Oh, still awkward.